Right, let's get this done so that we can go and watch the inauguration. God, have you thought about what he's going to do with the presidential oath? You know, put your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. It's going to be great, guys. Swearing in. No one's been sworn in like this before. I do the best swearing. Third most ridiculous person this week is Donald Trump, who gave an interview to the Times where he clarified his foreign policy. Well, I say clarified. Here's what he said about the Iran nuclear deal, for instance. Did you ever see a hundred million dollars in hundred dollar bills? It's a lot. 1.7 billion in cash. Plane loads. Many planes. Boom! I tried writing a zany punchline for this one, but in comparison to what the president-elect, sorry, what the president actually said, they all sounded far too sensible. In at number two this week, it's the leader of UKIP, Nigel Farage, who went on to radio... No, 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 Jack, it's not him anymore. It's not? Well, then why is he still everywhere? Oh, I think he just wants attention. Well, who is it now then? Paul Nuttall. Who? Paul Nuttall. Who? In at number two this week, it's Paul Nuttall, who went on to radio forums, asked whether or not he was excited by a Donald Trump presidency, to which he said, I'm very excited. He's clearly an Anglophobe. Come on, Paul, not knowing the difference between Anglophobe and Anglophile. Come on, learn the language. And in at number one this week, it's Boris Johnson, who was let out of the Foreign Office because what's the worst that could happen? I think that if Monsieur Hollande wants to administer punishment beatings uh, to anybody who chooses to escape, rather in the manner of some sort of World War II movie, more disconcerting than Boris's ability to insult our allies is the fact that he seems to interpret foreign policy solely through the prism of Second World War films. But which ones? Uh, it can't be Escape to Victory, because in that one, the plucky Brits are helped by a load of foreigners. Uh, it can't be The Great Escape, because in that one, the plucky Brits all get shot at the end. Uh, and it can't be The Eagle has landed, because at the end of that, a man is assassinated whilst he's pretending to be Winston Churchill. And if that were to happen in real life, Boris would be the prime target. Still, at least Boris only refers to fascists in passing. His fellow Brexiteer, Michael Gove, gives him the thumbs up. No, wait a minute, surely that can't be him. He looks like he's been photoshopped in. But let's take another look. Oh, no, that's, that's just what he looks like. Doo -doo. 